Greetings, dear businessmen, dear partners. You are great. You know, I really want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for what you are doing, for what you are doing. Because thanks to you today, there are people who, with tears in their eyes, thank Jesus Christ for what he has done for them. But you know, it's so interesting. The Bible is written for you. Do you know what the Bible says for you? This is the epistle to the Corinthians. In the ninth verse, see how interesting the Apostle Paul is. From chapter 8, he begins to talk about giving. He speaks of the church near Macedonia. In general, this church of Macedonia is very famous so far. Today, I literally looked at Macedonia on the Internet. God, she's just beautiful now. Well, listen, here he talks all the time here for finances. And now in chapter 9, he comes to what he says. With all I will say, whoever sells sparingly will reap sparingly. Have you heard this expression? Then he goes on to say, each one gives according to the disposition of his heart, not with chagrin and not with coercion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That is... You know, when you give, he teaches you to always give finances, not with chagrin and not with coercion, but to evoke loving yourself, to evoking yourself a desire, as if willingly giving, that is, as if you want it, as if you are looking for it, as if you are like a hunter, in order to give. Here is written such loves God. I thought that God also loves the one who does not want to give. It turns out not. It turns out that such a person is written. God loves. Now listen further. God is able to enrich you with all grace, so that you always and in everything, having all contentment, and now it's not about service, but about you personally, about your life, all contentment. And then it is already said that they were rich in every good deed. Two things, your life and for your ministry to be financially powerful. Now it is further said, as it is written, he squandered, he distributed to the poor. True, he remains forever. This is said for Jesus. Can you imagine? This truth endures forever. That is, when we squander, when we give, we are at that moment doing something that God calls righteousness. True, it remains forever. He who gives seed to the one who sows their bread will give abundance to what you have sown and will multiply the fruit of righteousness by vi. Look how interesting it is. God always, when he gives money, he gives two things. Give seed to the sower. That is, he gives the seed for you to donate. He always gives you seed. And he gives you bread to eat. And here, in these moments, you should always know this. But listen, what's next? What am I leading to? Where it speaks for you and multiplies the fruits of your righteousness so that you are rich in everything for all generosity, which through us produces thanksgiving to God. Imagine through us, through our own sacrifices, through our partners, through our tithes, thanksgiving is made to God through other people. Look further, for the work of serving everything not only makes up for the poverty of the saints, but also produces abundant thanksgiving to God in many. That is, imagine when a sister, for example, her ovary hurts there, her cervix hurts, she goes to this hospital there, she no longer knows what to do, she no longer has money, she has no hope. She endures it all, drinks painkillers, waits for it to end it all. It's terrible for her life. And suddenly, during the telecrusade, it is said, put your hand on the sore spot. 
She puts her hand on the sore spot, and the warmth is gone, and she is healed. And she says, Jesus, praise you, Jesus, praise you. But who did it? God! And look who reproduced it so that people praise God. Partners. Sincere communication with them and with everyone. I just know when I read for this before, for this especially, I was thinking and thinking all the time. I think a person who, here and he may have bad feelings. At this moment, he may have a bad business. He may not have money. That loyalty costs him something. You know, and he doesn't even feel good about it. He is attacked by demons, maybe at this time, but he does not even imagine that at this moment, when he remains faithful, God is doing a miracle somewhere and someone is praising God, thanking God. And God sees, he sees this thanksgiving, and he understands why it happened. Because someone's loyalty turned out to be expensive to this miracle, someone's loyalty. Do you understand what we are talking about? An interesting moment is how important it is for us to always rely not on feelings, not on what is happening in our life there and purposely move forward, in no case do not give back, never, never allow yourself to doubt something. He never allows himself to waver somewhere, because chapter 10, verse 38 is written to the Hebrews, the righteous will live by faith, but if anyone wavers, my soul does not favor him. God has a soul. And he says, my soul does not favor those who waver, imagine. But the righteous will live by faith. That is, we need to believe. But you know, believing is easy when you see, and when you see quite the opposite. Here it is, and it's called faith. This is the faith. And it is by faith that we please God. Seeing the invisible, Moses was firm. And now look further, as it is interesting to say, we are not of those who waver to perdition, but stand in faith for the salvation of the soul. You should always know this, that this moment is so valuable, it is so important that each of you understands. Do not rely on feeling. Do not rely on circumstances. Do not rely on what is happening in the world today. Maybe one thing today, another tomorrow. It may soon be that some kind of plague will cover the world in general. You know, people will be afraid to even look out the window. Maybe the war will cover the whole world. Maybe something else. We must remain those faithful servants of God. After all, Jesus said all this, that it will be, it is all being fulfilled. And we serve, we go forward.